All right, uh, welcome everybody once again. Um, hope you had a good break. Got something to snack on, munch on. Okay, uh, let's resume. Um, so, so far we, uh, we looked at three Hebrew words for praise. Uh, the first one was yada. It simply means to praise with extended hands. Um, it could be used for prayers uh, made of supplication and request uh, uh, or to engage everybody in corporate worship, uh, you know, or to just be in awe of, of, of who God is. And, you know, as we see in Habakkuk chapter three, uh, you know, when the creation's prayers and uh, praise him, uh, we ought to join in. Um, and the second word, toda, is uh, lifting our hands and with expectations, uh, you know, for the things that we have not received. Confessing, like I just shared, uh, in 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 the goodness of God, like believing that He is good, uh, and so and therefore you are going to praise Him. You choose to praise Him, uh, regardless of your situation and your circumstance. Um, and the, the third word which we saw was uh, Hallel. Uh, Hallel is the primary Hebrew root word for which hallelujah is formed, okay? Um, actually, let me go ahead and share the screen. Okay. Awesome. Okay, uh, so let's move on. Um, the fourth word, uh, the Hebrew word for praise is Shabbat. Okay, you gotta let that phlegm kind of ring. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I, it, in physical classroom, it's really fun to get all my students do this and just to hear them. Uh, but yeah, we're not gonna do that online. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, so we're going to call this as the shout of praise. Okay, uh, everybody with your mics muted, say the shout of praise. Okay. And everybody say Shabbat. Shabbat. Okay. Uh, it simply means a loud adoration. Okay, a loud adoration adoration uh you are adoring someone something okay you are just lost in the beauty of the thing or some someone or something right a loud adoration you're declaring out loud is like hey you are beautiful you are awesome you are magnificent it's a, it's a shout of praise um it means to commend to adore to triumph okay so that's what Shabbat is all about. It means to address in a loud tone. Okay, that's it. It just simply means to address in a loud tone, to command, to triumph, glory, and shout. Okay, uh, I love these scriptures. It says Psalm 145 verse 4, uh, one generation shall Shabbat your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts you know all, all of a sudden a perception kind of changes isn't it the imagery you know we use praise for everything the english you know we praise you we praise you we praise you for this we praise you for that and then all of a sudden when we understand okay so this is the word that's used here and it's saying one generation shall what does it say shall shout of your praise Okay, it's just, just in the loud adoration, declare your praise uh, this, to the next generation and shall declare your mighty acts. Uh, Psalm 117 verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. Okay, praise the Lord. All you nations, not just one nation, not just two nations, all you nations, Shabachim, all you people of the earth. Okay, um, Darren Whitehead, uh, uh, he he's written this book called uh, The Holy Roar. Uh, if you can get your hands on it, 
it's, it's awesome okay it's called um, holy roar he co-authored that with chris tomlin i hope everybody knows who chris tomlin is so so the author of that book holy roar darren whitehead who's also a pastor of a church uh, he writes this the holy roar of praise is not self-contained it's not just for a particular people in a particular space okay it's not just for the youth it's not just for the young people in a youth concert or in a praise and worship concert it's not praise for the purpose of pumping up a present crowd okay guys just pay attention to that line it's not praise for the purpose of pumping up a present crowd because most of the time we look at praise as okay guys let's use a praise a jumpy song you know let's pump up the crowd <laughs> um but he says it's not that it's for the passing on the faith from one generation to the next generation the future church is waiting for the sound of shabak wow and how these people have such insights i don't know but praise god thank god for people like them and who actually can you know, write out uh but yeah i just want to read that whole thing one more time if uh, you know it says the holy roar of praise is not self contained it's not just for a particular people in a particular space it's not praise for the purpose of pumping up a present crowd it's for the passing on the faith from one generation to the next generation the future church is waiting for the sound of shabakh um and these are all the key scriptures here uh is, let's just go to um psalm 71 all of us if you can go to psalm 71 please I want to I want to read a lot of scriptures from this psalm okay uh, I'll call out the verses um Psalm 71 okay just make sure you're there okay I want to read from verse 14 cuz I like it uh, it says but as for me I will always have hope I will praise you more and more my mouth will tell of your righteousness of your salvation all day long think of one of the definitions of praise is a verbal declaration isn't it we, as we, which we learned okay, it's a verbal declaration here verse 15 he's saying my mouth will tell of your righteousness a verbal declaration verse 16 i will come and proclaim your mighty acts o sovereign lord i will proclaim your righteousness yours alone oh i'm reading from niv divya yeah it's an ancient one i'm reading from <laughs> uh verse 17 it says since my youth o oh god you have taught me and to this day i declare your marvelous deeds verse 18 even when i am old and gray do not forsake me o god listen to this till i declare your power to the next generation your might to all who are to come okay can i read that verse one more time verse 18 it says even when i am old and gray do not forsake me o god till i declare your power till i declare your praise till i declare your works till i declare who you are to the next generation your might to all who are to come the future church and then let us come down to verse 22 psalm 71 verse 22 says i will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness oh my god i will sing praise to you with lyre o holy one of israel my lips will shout for joy okay verse 23 my lips will shout for joy my lips will shabakh for joy when i sing praise to you i whom you have redeemed my tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long 
for those who wanted to harm me and who have who have been put to shame and confusion amen amen um, again a lovely painting of the importance of shabakh is uh, the importance of praising so that the generations to come will know who our god is and and in a way in a sense it says the generations to come will know who our god is who your god is by our praise okay solomon as we read before in first kings chapter 8 he wrote, he writes right uh, you know here when your people hear uh, cry for help hear them with their when they are when they are lifting up their hands towards uh, the inner sanctuary hear them why he wrote that is because he saw his father do that's what we saw in Psalm 28. David writes that, hear my cry, O Lord, and I've raised my hands towards you. And Solomon had that vision. And then he writes that in 1 Kings chapter 8. So Shabbat is super important. Uh, you know, our generations, our children will know who our God is, uh, you know, uh, with, with our shouts of praise. Amen. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's move on. Um, The fifth word, Hebrew word for praise is tahila. Okay, we're calling this as the song of praise. Okay, a tahila. Um, the definition there is glory, praise. It's a song of praise. It's a, it's it's a laudation or hymns of the spirit. Uh, it's a spontaneous song. It's a new song. Okay, it's an eruption of a spontaneous song. Okay, uh, just a few scriptures here. But you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In other words, you are holy, enthroned on the songs of Israel. Okay, uh, Psalm 40, verse 3. He put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Simply means his courts with the songs of praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Amen. Uh, can, can I request uh, some of us to just read Psalm 22 verse 3 in different languages please. Psalm 22, verse 3, uh, what is mentioned over there? Anybody in any language, uh, just go for it, please. Shall I read in Tamil again? Yes, please. Israel in Tudikalukul Vasama Irikra Devarire Parisitta. Can you just read that again? Israel in Tudigalukul, Vasama Irikra Devarire Parisutter. I mean, he who dwells, who lives in the midst of the praises of Israel. Oh, man. Okay, well, what other languages do we have? Anybody else? Hindi, Malayalam, Kannada, um, uh, Tamil, right? Yeah. I'll read in Malayalam. Yes, go for it. Israel in the Tudigal in Milvasik in the Ni Parishuddhan Agunuello. Yeah, who dwells on top of the praises uh, on the songs of praises of Israel? Amen. Amen. Any other languages? Yes. Thanks, John. Odia. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Tathapi he Israel ro prasansa nivasin tumbe pavitra otho. Amen. And what I love about that verse is, is not just saying that he dwells there, but he. He is the Holy One of Israel. He is set apart. He is one of a kind. There is no one like him. And he dwells on the songs of the praises. Um, isn't that wonderful? Um, another um, one of the definitions uh, for Tahila, which I have not mentioned here, I think it's in your notes though, is, uh, is, is inviting us to be a book of praise. Isn't that interesting? Uh, one of the definitions for Tahila simply means is like you are, you are have to be a dictionary of praise, a book of of praise, um, and uh, and this is um, look at. Can we go to Psalm eighteen, please? 
Sam APM. All of us. Okay, when you're there, say amen. Psalm 18, are we there? Okay. Okay, uh, once again, uh, I want different people to start reading. Uh, this time, uh, can I just request uh, all of us to read only in English, okay? Psalm 18. Uh, verse 1 and verse 2. Can I read? Just go for it, yeah. Uh, Psalm 118. No, Psalm 18. Psalm 18. Not, uh, not 118, sorry. It's 18, yeah. Okay, let me read. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. My seal and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Subhashish. Uh, yeah, Priya, if you're there, go for it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm reading from Amplified Bible. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and the one who uh, rescues me. This is Psalm 18, yes. 1 and 2. Yes. Thank you, Priya. Anybody else? Yeah, I need a few more people to read the same psalm, same scriptures. I'll go. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock, in whom I find protection. He's my shield, the power that saves me, in my place of safety. Thank you, Jeffina. I uh, want two more people, and we'll move on. Two more people. Come on, come on. Let's go. Baby? Yes, go ahead, Divya. Yeah. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Mm. Thank you. It's one last person. I love I you, love both you. my strength. God is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Amen. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Thank you, everybody, for uh, reading the same psalm. In the same verses multiple times. Thanks, guys. But here's the thing, right? So we all read uh, as, I love you, Lord. Oh, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Okay, let's pause. Uh, but before verse one, I just want us to read uh, what's just above the psalm before it starts. I'm not sure if it's there in your Bible, but there's this note above psalm uh, before verse one. It says, for the director of music, of David, the servant of the Lord. Here's where it's getting interesting. He says, he sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Now, when we put ourselves in David's shoe, he He's been running for his life. He's been running in the wilderness, hiding. There's no shade. There's no water. He's tired. He's weary. His soul is weary. Uh, everything, everything about that scenario is low. But then he realizes and, and he knows that God has saved his life from his enemies. And it's, it was at that point he erupts with this tehila, with this spontaneous song of praise. So if you put, if you were to put yourself in, in the shoes of David, right, if you were being chased for your life, there's an enemy out there who wants to kill you, destroy you to your roots, and you've just been saved from that situation, 
and then you read this psalm like you, you, it, it's almost like a cry of a warrior right uh, i don't want to scream or anything but then you just feel the intensity of it when you understand the situations like then he's like i love you oh lord my strength when he says lord my strength i can imagine david crying out with all his strength with all his might he's screaming on top of his lungs and erupting in the song is saying i love you oh lord my strength the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer my god is my rock in whom i take refuge for he is my shield and the horn of my salvation amen what i want to encourage or ask us is is your heart a heart that is full of praise is is your heart a book of praise um one of the best investments i've done in my life uh, if again if you are in india is uh, you go to any of these uh, christian bookstores like els or om uh, i bought this book called uh, 10th 1000 uh, praises okay 1000 praises uh, it was it's 10 rupees okay i <laughs> it's uh, i would, you know that actually it was gifted to me by my mother so and i would just you know read it you know thousand praises it's just a book of praise and i would encourage you to uh, you know buy it if you can it thing is available in every language in india and uh, there's a soft copy pdf available online for those who uh, you know can't have access to that but um and and i guarantee you that it will come in handy when you expect the unexpected of life um and so there were this times uh, and i would just make a note you know of all these praises and uh you know just keep reading it uh and uh and i would have this note in my phone you know on my notes uh you know just this bunch of praises that i can just read when i have absolutely no clue of what's happening or oh, when i just feel like praising him okay so I just want to read this you know bunch of praises that uh I made a note of uh you know just for my personal uh, meditation devotion and my my personal time of worship and I'm calling it the praise break okay um it's uh, it starts off with his name is Jesus my savior the lover of my soul my everlasting father my righteousness my delight my king of kings my lord of lords my lion of the tribe of juda he is my glory and the lifter up of my head my sustainer my light he is my strength my hope my power my strong tower my hiding place he is my shield my mighty fortress my stronghold my prince of peace my healer my counselor my refuge my deliverer my redeemer my portion my lily of the valley my rose of sharon my fair one my restorer my jehovah jireh my jehovah nissi my el shaddai adonai my offering and the offerer my sacrifice and my high priest my inheritance my rock my bright and morning star my cornerstone he is the alpha and the omega with the blast of his nostrils he split the red sea by his word the heavens were made the starry host by the breath of his mouth to whom can i compare him he alone is awesome the demons flee at the sound of his name the heavens shake and the earth trembles the mountains melt like wax in the presence of god he is the ceo of the universe my ancient of days my song my warrior my right hand my majesty my unfailing love he is my pillar of cloud by day and my pillar of fire by night and i can go on and uh, yeah so I, that's having just that the bunch of praises uh for me to go to has has changed so much uh around me it would change the atmosphere when your heart is like that heart of david which is ready to erupt in praise any situation any uh, you know any circumstances life throws at you the question is does your heart 
can your heart erupt in a spontaneous song of praise in Tahila? Okay, so that's uh, Tahila for all of us. Um, let's move on. Okay, the sixth uh, Hebrew word for praise is the posture uh, of praise, um, calling this as barach. The definition here is to kneel or bow down, to bless God as an act of adoration, to praise, to salute, to thank. Um, now, this has more of a, a military connotation to it. Uh, what do I mean by that? Is this is you are bowing down with your head up high okay uh, have you seen uh, you know uh, like in, in the ancient times uh, the army officers the soldiers do bow before the general or bow before an emperor or a king is it's not face down but they would bow down but with you know with the face held high or they would just bow down uh, you know that's what Barak is um, um, in Psalm 72, uh, verse 11 and 15, it says, Yeah, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him, and he shall live. And to him shall be given all gold of sheep. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. Okay. Psalm 103 is all about Barak. Okay. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Um, right, so just because of the lack of time, um, going on a little, uh, you know, I'm going to move on. Uh, but I would encourage you to read all these scriptures, uh, you know, that is uh, mentioned for all these uh, uh, for all these uh, words. Uh, Divya, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I was just uh, wondering if uh, this Barak, the term, does it have a uh, relation to First Chronicles or, or Second Chronicles 20, that chapter where Jehoshaphat, the yeah. uh, Valley of Barak, uh, does it have a relation to that term? Yes, yes, it does. Actually, in fact, uh, so this has a very close relations to, uh, so what we are learning right now is the seven Hebrew words for praise, right? Uh, but there is this one word for worship in Hebrew, which means shaha, uh, which I was hoping to share that if we had time today, uh, which means bow down, but your face is also down. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so it has very close relations to the same. So it's, it's used interchangeably. So in Second Chronicles 20, in context of Jehoshaphat, uh, and also, you know, when, for example, in Psalm 95, verse 6 says, you know, bow down before the king of kings. He is our maker, etc. So it's used interchangeably. But this Barak has more of a, uh, like, military connotations to it, like a soldier bowing down before an emperor or a king. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Pastor. Yeah. No okay. Uh, so that's Barak, um, and um, wait, is this the last one? I'm losing, yeah. So, okay, this is the last Hebrew word for praise. Okay, let's just quickly recap. What's the first one in the chat section? What's the first one? What's the first Hebrew word? Come on, come on, come on. Yada. Yada, okay. Okay, the second one. Toda. Toda, okay. Thank you. And the third one, come on. Hello. Hello. Awesome, thank you. Fourth. Shabbat. Shabbat, okay. And the fifth one. Dalila. Dalila. Tahila, okay. And the sixth. Barak. Barak, okay. And seven, finally, we have reached uh, the last one, which is Zamar. It just means the muse. We are going to call it as the music of praise. Okay, zamar is another Hebrew word for praise. The definition here is to make music, sing praises, to sing songs accompanied by musical instrument, to touch the strings or the parts of the musical instrument, to celebrate in song and music. 
I love this quote by Martin Luther. Uh, he says, next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. Uh, beautiful music is the art of the prophets that can calm the agitations of the soul. It is one of the most magnificent and delightful presents God has given us. Okay, so zamar simply means to make music, uh, to sing song of, songs of praises accompanied with a musical instrument, to make music, to pluck the strings. That's what it literally means, is to pluck, touch the strings and, or to pluck it, to make music uh, to his name. Okay, a few scriptures for us is, I will sing a new song to you, O God. On a harp of ten strings, I will sing praises to you. Second Kings 3.15, uh, we know this uh, scripture uh, where Elisha asks for a harpist to come. Like in the middle of a war, prophet Elisha asks for a musician. I want a harpist uh, to come. Um, and, um, and some more key scriptures for all of us. Uh, Ephesians 5.19, we all know this. Uh, actually, let's just go to Ephesians 5.19 uh, uh, and just read that passage of scripture. I should stop sharing um, efficiency. If anybody is there, feel free to read, please. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Amen. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you. But it, it says about uh, speak to one another with psalms, uh, hymns, spiritual songs. Sing and make music, and uh, and here the instrument that he is referring to is the heart. Okay, uh, I, I think it is Ronald Allen, a person called Ronald Allen. I'm not sure. He says uh, when an unbeliever. Okay, when an unbeliever becomes a Christian, he becomes a singer. Okay, when an unbeliever becomes a Christian, he becomes a singer. And then he posts this question after that. He says, it's not that if you can sing, the point is, does your heart have a song? Um, so, uh, that's, this is so beautiful. Okay, so those are the seven words uh, of praise uh, seven Hebrew words of praise guys okay um, and I and I pray that you know as you meditate on this again when you go back after the class after the day finishes you know when you meditate and you read the scriptures all those key scriptures mentioned uh, you know I pray that God will just beautifully uh, reveal the, the the beauty uh, of his words of his scripture okay um, yeah are you, are you are you all with me is everybody okay Yeah. Okay. Um, so this yes, is, yes. thank you. Um, something that I wanted to share, which is not in your notes, uh, is, uh, so, and if you notice that all of these, uh, um, word, the Hebrew words, right. Uh, is just, is not just an action word, but it's, uh, it, it has a posture, uh, attached to it. Right? It's, it's a posture praise, right? Like lifting up your hands is a posture, you know, bowing down is a posture um, and shouting is another posture. So uh, where is that notes? So um, I'm just going to share the screen um, and uh, and I briefly wanted to talk also about a the posture of worship, because we've been uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, the seven Hebrew words, which all, in a way, kind of uh, shows an image of a different kind of posture. Uh, so, so, okay, let me just go ahead and uh, add something to it. So this particular thing, uh, section is not in your notes, okay? So if you can make a note of it, uh, that's great. Um, Okay, so um, worship, uh, another definition is worship as a posture. Uh, Google defines posture as uh, the position in which someone holds their body when standing or sitting. 
okay, we just looked at Yada, Toda, Halal, and Zamar, Barak, okay, the position in which someone holds their body when standing or sitting. Uh, it also goes on to say a particular way of dealing with or considering something, an approach or attitude. Right? A particular way of dealing with or considering something, an approach or attitude. Okay, so uh, worship as a posture is is everything, and um, if you just look at the word posture, uh, there is good posture and there are bad posture, right? Um, there's a good posture to sit, uh, and if you don't sit properly, it's ba and bad posture will lead you to uh, to having a very bad backache uh, and whatnot. And uh, I'm not sure how many of y'all have experienced that, but uh, I had a lower back ache for, I don't know, six months or so, si simply because I was practicing my drums and my posture was bad. Um, and so now when I have to teach uh, drums or keyboards, or guitars, or anybody, one of the first lessons is your posture. You have to sit right, you have to hold you know, the sticks right, your, the distance between the keyboard and your hands has to be right, um, et cetera, et cetera, isn't it? So there, there's a posture for everything. Uh, when you look at uh, fans in the stadium, football fans, cricket fans, anything, whatever sports, where, when your team is winning or you know, someone scores a hundred or a goal or whatever, everybody erupts with their, with, you know, with their hands lifted up, uh, you know, so that's another sign of a posture, right? When, um, when a guy wants to propose to a girl, he goes down on one knee and he presents the ring. Or uh, when he's done something really bad and he's messed up, he goes on two knees to apologize, <laughs> right? Uh, so there's, there's good posture, there is a bad posture. Right, so um, every word that describes praise and worship, like we just saw in the Bible, describes a particular posture of the body. Um, okay, every word that describes praise and worship in the Bible describes a particular posture of the body. Okay, so the Hebrew word for worship is shahar. It means to bow down or to fall down flat. It means to put your face in its place. It's the ultimate picture of humility before God. It's, it's an ultimate picture of complete 100% surrender before God. And, um, and that's what the Hebrew word shaha means. Okay, um, let's look at this verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. This is the message version. It says, here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Can I read that one more time? Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Uh, and I want to read that in the NIV as well. Uh, Paul writes, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, because of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now, uh, why, 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 did someone raise their hand? Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not able to see who's raised their hand. Let's go off. Did anyone want to ask a question or anything, guys? Okay, I guess not. Must have been, must have been an accident. Okay. Um, yeah, one of the reasons why I wanted to, uh, you know, look at this scripture is um, 
I want you to think with me about the posture of the one that's going to be sacrificed. Uh, what do you think the posture of, of, of something or someone that's going to be sacrificed? What do you think the posture is? Talk to me, people. Um, I'm thinking about the sacrifice uh, of Abraham when he gave Isaac, you know, he made him flat and he died. <laughs> Maybe that's the posture of the sacrifice at all. Sure, sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yeah. What about the others? You know, Zelitoli, Priya, Ruben? What do you think is the posture of a sacrifice? Can I share? Yes, please. Yeah. 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 One thing um, that always uh, uh, excites me is to see the mountains, how mm -hmm. they are like. So every time I see a mountain, I feel like they are bowing down like a hand like our hands like bowing to god mm -hmm. uh, yeah so as uh, sometimes i feel that even some churches which have um, a kind of triangular ceiling so uh, it's kind of a bowing down to god posture i just love yeah. that picture of seeing mountains bowing down yeah wow that's, that's yeah that's awesome thanks for sharing divya yeah, uh, thank you yeah. Anybody else? Would, uh, what do you think is the posture of the one that's going to be sacrificed? Uh, what I um, see is uh, uh, trees uh, when they uh, dance in the wind. I feel it is like worshiping God. Right. Okay. And Thanks. Thank you, Priya. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, you know. When I think of the posture of, of something or someone that's going to be sacrificed, uh, you know, and when Paul is saying, offer your bodies as living sacrifice, the posture of the one, uh, and we just saw the definitions of sacrifice in, in the previous classes, isn't it, is complete surrender. It's just no control whatsoever. You are saying, you know, I bow down before you. You are my master. You do what you want to do with me. You have all the authority. You are my king. My heart is yours. My, my life is yours. Everything I want to do, my desires are yours. Absolutely yours. The sacrifice is going to be on the altar. The sheep doesn't have any say. Right? The sheep doesn't have any say. Um, and the historians claim that when uh, Abraham wanted to sacrifice Isaac, Isaac was a teenager. A, a, a well-built teenager that's what they claim and uh, he could have resisted his 100 year old father or 120 at that time very easily and easily overpowered but instead he submits he surrenders um, in other words like what jesus says not my will but yours be done right that's what shaha is just bowing down uh, and you know and laying it, laying it everything at the feet of Jesus, and just be this beautiful uh, psalm in Psalm ninety-five. You don't have to turn; I'll read it for us. Um, psalm ninety-five, verse six. It says, "Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. Right? Let us come down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker." Now, when you bow down, just imagine this with me, right? When you're bowing down, your head is going down with you. Your eyes are coming down with you. Your ears are also coming down with you. Your mouth is also coming down with you, isn't it? Yeah? So when you bow down, what you hear is in full surrender to him. What you want to say is in full surrender to him. What you want to... Uh, what is what you want to see is in full surrender to him. So when you come down, you're saying just all of me is in surrender to you. So you have your way. Um, 
And that's just another beautiful imagery. So uh, quickly, let's just move on. So there's good posture and then there is bad posture. So good posture is the worship, you're, you're bowing down, but then there is bad posture, okay? The opposite of humility is pride. Um, and uh, the first worship leader had a huge issue with submission that God had to throw him out. Okay, can we read uh, Isaiah chapter 14? I mean, let's go to Isaiah chapter 14. Okay, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 to 15. Okay, I'll read it for us. Isaiah 14, verse 13 to 15. It says, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high but you are brought down to the grave, to the depths of the pit. And uh, you can read Ezekiel 28, uh, 14, 15, and 17 as well. Um, and a few scriptures for us, James 4, 6, it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He mocks the mockers in Proverbs, he says, but gives grace to the humble. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Matthew. 23 said, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Proverbs 6, 16 or 17, uh, probably the most uh, famous popular passage when it comes to pride, says, there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. The first one on the list, right on top, okay, it's haughty eyes, a proud look. This literally means haughty or lofty eyes means su meaning supreme disdain, means the feeling that someone or something is unworthy of one's consideration or respect. That's what pride does. Okay, you, you kind of have this condescending attitude that I am better. I can sing better than that fellow. I can sing better than that girl. I can sing, play the instrument better than him. I can do everything I can do in life better than everybody else because I'm the best. Uh, and that's a bad posture. Satan kind of understood that, isn't it? Uh, and he understood the power of worship. He understands our enemy, guys. Our enemy knows the power of worship. Okay, um, so that's why he asks Jesus to bow before him in worship. That's what he wants. He wants our worship. Uh, and that's what Shadrach, made, um, Meshach, and Abednego refused to do so. It's like, I refuse to bow down before a false king, before a false god, before an idol. I will choose not to bow down before another idol. I will, not, I will choose not to bow down before a man-made God. Because my worship, our worship, is to the only one, and that is the Holy One of Israel. Okay, I just stop there, because that's the end of it. <clears throat> So, um, really, yeah, we're almost out of time as well. Um, so that is the posture of worship, uh, guys. It's it's simple. It simply means total surrender, absolute humility, and complete brokenness before the King of all kings. Amen. Um, that is the posture of worship, and that is uh, the life that. God encourages us to live. That is the life that I would want to encourage all of us to live, a live a life that is pleasing, a live a life uh, that is like a sweet aroma to God. Amen. Okay, so what we've covered today is the seven Hebrew words for praise and one Hebrew word for worship. <laughs> okay, uh, hope you get a chance to go back and uh, re-meditate on the notes and uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Uh, let's pray and close today's session. Father, we thank you. Uh, 
uh, we thank you how beautiful you are. And Lord, your word says that you stoop down to make us great. Lord, you humble yourself. I pray that, uh, Lord, you will be a perfect example that, that we will learn from and how we can go about living our lives, Jesus. And I pray that everything that we learn will just not be a head knowledge, Lord, that we learn and we forget. I pray, Lord, that we, that we will erupt in praise, that we will, our hearts will be filled with the songs of praise for you, Jesus, that we will celebrate your goodness, your kindness, that we will shout out, that we will make known of your goodness, that the next generation will know who you are, Father. I thank you that we have this wonderful opportunity to learn from your word. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you teach us, you open our eyes to the things that are hidden in your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, I want to thank you for joining today's session. Uh,